Hey, I want to say hello to my Canadian friends and uh, love you guys. I'm so glad that I could do this for the E-O-N-D district and uh, be able to help you with your follow conference. And uh, I just want to say I love technology. I love that we can do this, but I would have loved it more to be in Canada. I've been there before, but I have not been to Toronto. I have not been to Montreal. Um, it's on my bucket list, both of those places. Of course, also so is golfing Cabot Cliffs, which I don't believe is in your district, but talk to your fellow district over because I would love to do a golf retreat there. It's on my bucket list. I can't wait for COVID to be over and uh, we're, we can see the end is in sight uh, and, and someday we'll be back traveling. And again, I hope to be there with you. Until then, we'll use this technology. And uh, I just, I wanna talk to you real quick about uh, follow and, and, and being a leader worth following and being a follower of Jesus and different things. We have two sessions. And the first one I wanna talk to you about being a follower of Jesus and uh, being a follower, being a leader, somebody that is able to be followed is something that I've talked about before. Um, I'm gonna do this because I can, um, but I wrote a book, Front Row Leadership, and uh, it's, it's stop criticizing and start leading. And it's like being that type of leader that, that you know people would wanna follow. I also wrote a book, Fix It, Whose Problem Is It? Is it yours as the leader? Is it God's that he needs to take care of? Is it the people's problem? Whose problem? You can see there's kind of a leadership theme that's going on in my life lately. And then my latest book is Speed of Unity, uh, which is saying moving at the speed of unity, by far my best uh, work. John Maxwell wrote the foreword. And again, leadership, leading a culture that is unified. But that's not what you asked me to talk about. But I thought I'd just say, if you like what you hear now, there's other resources available. And uh, every time people buy these, it helps me make my missions pledge that, I, that I've made to help move the kingdom of God forward. Um, but I wanna talk to you about being a leader um, and just being a follower of Jesus. You know, we're leaders, but we gotta be followers of Jesus. And I think about what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And I don't know about you, but that's intimidating. I look at that and go, follow, follow them, follow like, I. I'm pretty good, just, you know, but that is challenging to me. Follow me as I follow Christ. And it, it births, it's out of being a follower of Jesus Christ that Paul says that. He doesn't say I'm an amazing whatever. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. And I wanna talk to you about that. Um, never lose it that you're a follower of Jesus Christ first. Before God called you to be in the ministry, he presented salvation to you and you respond to that. You were a follower of Jesus Christ before the calling came. And you can't lose that. And it's sad because I, I see people become professionals, and I don't want to be professional. I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ that is equipping others and using my leadership gift to go ahead and grow his kingdom. Um, I do a preacher's kid teaching that I do when I travel, and I talk about the crazy thing about your kids in ministry is they see Jesus as your boss before they know him as their savior. Think about that. They go to church. Oh, dad works at church. Mom works at church. Mom's a pastor. Dad's a pastor. You get the point? Oh, they go there. They serve Jesus. Jesus is their boss. And, and, and church is a place where you work. And then you've got to convey to your kids, no, like, that, that's true, but before we worked for Jesus, we loved Jesus, and he loves us, and I responded. And so I'm a Christian first, and then I'm a pastor, an evangelist, a teacher, an administrator, whatever you're doing for the kingdom of God. So with that challenge, remember, you are first a follower of Jesus Christ. So I'll give you a couple things that came to me as I prep for this. Keep it personal. Keep it personal. I mean... Uh, personal devotions, personal worship, personal growth. Um, so let's start there, personal devotions. Do not just go to the Bible for uh, the sermon. You know, I need a sermon, I need a sermon, I need a sermon. It's personal devotions. And so I brought my soap journal with me here, and uh, every year I just insert a new uh, uh, notebook in here, and I have my journal, and I, I keep track of it. I write it out just like, I ask our church to do. We actually assign everybody in our church two chapters a day to read. Um, it's online, and you can see that at 
uh, on our app, on our River Valley app or at our website. You look for SOAP, Scripture, Observation, Application, Prayer. Wayne Cordero came up with it. We adapted it. And um, I have my personal devotion, my SOAP time, just like everybody else. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. So I am systematically reading through the Bible with the whole church. You know, I might add more to it. I always do the proverb of the day. I always, you know, add a little more. Sometimes I'll read the two chapters, the proverb, and then maybe another book like 1 Timothy or 2 Timothy. You know, I'll, I'll add some. But so you don't have to be bound by it. But I'm just doing my walk with God and keeping it personal. If you're going to be a, a leader that's worth following, if you're going to um, be a follower of Jesus Christ, in the ministry, do your own personal time with Jesus. And can I, I just wanna point this out. In the first couple pages, I have sermons and ideas. Some of my best sermons come out of time just being with Jesus. I'm not even looking. And he just drops a nugget on there. And uh, like Ephesians 4, 24, I was reading the message and I started working on a sermon called A God-Fashioned Life. A, a life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct. And so I started working about this. So that was just coming out of reading, keeping it personal, keeping it personal, and never forget that. Personal devotions, I know people, sometimes they get so busy, they only see the Bible as a reference tool and not life. It's your life. And then the second thing would be personal worship. Um, side note on a pet peeve on that, um, when I'm in church service, I want to worship Jesus. I do not want to be distracted. And sometimes as a guest, or if I have a guest at church, you know, they're like, hey, uh, did you write that song? Is that a new song? That, you know, uh, hey, what time are we ending? Hey, what's for lunch? Hey, uh, you know, um, oh, are those your kids? You know, and chit chat. And I'm like, I'm here to worship Jesus. I want to worship Jesus just like everybody else, which on top of that, so no talking. Stop that as much as possible. Let's focus in on Jesus. Now, I know there might be things like, uh-oh, we forgot that scripture. Uh-oh, we forgot. I get that, because we're also on, but let's try to give the best undivided worship, personal worship, and, and be able to do that. And then um, with that, um, when we, are you listening in your car? Like, in my car, I'm listening. On my iPhone, I'm listening. Um, and I wrote this down. What's the last song you just put on repeat? that you just worshiped and worshiped and worshiped and, and it wrecked you because you just listened to it over and over and over again. I know we had this song, um, our church has a song called, I Just Want the Real Thing. I mean, I just listened to it over and over and over and over and it, lacked, it just wrecked me. It just was one of those like, wow, okay, God. So when, when was the last time you cried and felt the presence of God? that you literally just cried for your city, just the overwhelming, because you kept it personal and you, you're a follower of Jesus first. And from that heart of worship, it flows out. Um, and then personal growth. Uh, nobody's gonna make you grow. You have to be responsible for your personal growth. And again, in my journal, like I have my prayer list here. I have 31 virtues that I pray over my children, my purpose statement. I have uh, personal goals, church goals, um, books that I've read, old school sermons. So for me, personal growth, in addition to the things that I'll, I'll get out there, I've found that I could sit down and read old school sermons. So I make it a goal every year to read 104 old school sermons. What is that? Like it, people that are dead, people that are gone. Um, uh, C.M. Ward, Canadian guy. Uh, I read his sermons and, and he's gone. And I, went, I just, he feeds me from the things that he wrote down and the things that he was able to put there. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, uh, I read some of his. I, I, I'm going, so I'm reading 104 old school sermons every year that are feeding me and I'm keeping it personal. And then also the books, like I'm either reading books that are growing me as a Christian or growing me as a leader. And I can point it out so far, the books this year, When the Chisel Hits the Rock, that's personal spiritual development. Um, I read the whole Revival Time, number 19, CM Ward Sermons. Um, the Infinite Game by Simon Sinek, that's leadership. Uh, a Guide to Fervent Prayer by Pink. And some people have asked me, like, hey, these, some of these writers are Calvinists. I'm okay with that. I, I, I can read their stuff, too. I'm mature enough. I, I got this. I'm okay. 
I'll, I'll, I'll get the good. Um, then third option was uh, about uh, race and being able to grow as a leader. Uh, here's one, COVID, unreported truth. That's just, I had to make decisions on COVID, open, close, this, that. So I wanted to read it. Um, uh, treasure principle on money, uh, people to love, which is uh, dealing with homosexuality and how the church, church can respond to that. And so I'm growing as a Christian, I'm growing as a leader. My books are either personal spiritual growth or leadership, which is pastoral leadership or personal leadership. That's, I, that's just what I do. People say, well, I love to read a novel. I'm not, I don't take the time usually for that. But keep it personal, keep it personal. I'll move on from there. Um, second thing would be don't make excuses. Don't make excuses. What do I mean by that? Um, people would say, I'm going to make an excuse. I'm stop. I, I stopped reading the Bible. I stopped praying. God knows my thoughts. I stopped tithing um, because I make such low money. That's like my tithe. And so I've got a deal. And so if, if you're going to be a follower of Jesus Christ, you're not going to be able to excuse yourself out of the things that all followers of Jesus Christ do. And I know it sounds crazy to think that pastors would do this, but I'll talk to them like, when was the last time you just read the word of God just to read the word of God? Like, ah, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, when was the last time you just prayed? And, and a real stickler is like, you mean you don't tithe? Like, well, yeah, and they, they make excuses and they, they start to say, I'm special. I'm different. It doesn't apply to me. And I'm, I'm amazed at this, that like Deuteronomy chapter five talks about don't turn to the left or to the right when you follow me. Proverbs 4, 27, don't turn to the left or to the right when you follow me. When God anoints, uh, has Samuel anoint Saul, he's saying, I, I want a leader that won't turn to the left or to the right. We see in 2 Kings 22, uh, Josiah was a young king and the Bible says he didn't turn to the left or to the right, you get this. There's, there's, what is that? That's exception living. I have an exception. God allows me to do this, and he doesn't demand of me to walk down this road. And if you're gonna be a follower of Jesus Christ that's gonna minister out of that abundance, you cannot give yourself excuses to not do the things that keep your faith with Jesus Christ vibrant, growing, dynamic, living in obedience. It's good for you and not for me. We're, seriously, so these are the things that, that we have to look at and say, if I'm gonna be just a simple follower of Jesus Christ, these are the things I wanna do. And then I would say this, uh, continue to, continue to step out in faith. When was the last time you just stepped out in faith and just said, I'm stepping out in faith in this? Personally, like I, I think it's interesting when people say, well, I make so little or this, and well, step out in faith in a giving goal. Step out in faith and believe God for something in your life. I'm reminded of this, that I, I, I said, I wanna take my family on a family missions trip. And I stepped out in faith and I said, I'm gonna do this. I don't know how it's gonna happen. I'm gonna believe God and I'm gonna step out in faith and take my family on a missions trip. Sure, the church would have paid for me to go, but I'm like, Becca, Connor, Logan, we're all gonna go on a trip. And I even wrote down underneath it, China. And I said, I step up, God, I believe you. I wanna, I wanna live an active faith life. We tell our people in our church, like, sign up for a global team, God will provide. Well, I wanted to live it. And I remember I wrote it down, I prayed it. Maybe a couple weeks later, this guy comes up to me and he says, uh, hey, have you ever thought about going on a missions trip with your family? I'm like, yeah, that's something I'm praying about. He's like, really? He's like, you know, the global team China's coming up. And he goes, we'd love for you guys to go. I said, I, we're trying to save. And he goes, we would love to pay for you and your family to go. I'm like, wow, I stepped out of faith. I had no idea that he would do that. I, I'm reminded of another thing. I stepped out in faith. You, you can never lose this. Don't just step out in faith for the church. Step out in your own life, um, which, okay, I'm thinking of this right now, so I'll say this. When I honor people that are my authority and I send our superintendent of the Assemblies of God, I send Doug Clay a gift for pastor appreciation from our church I honor him with the church's money, and then I honor him with my money, and I send him two gifts, one from the church, one from me, because Rob Ketterling needs to be a follower of Jesus Christ, not just a pastor. So I do that. So um, you're stepping out in faith, 
And I'm reminded of when our church had a financial crisis and I stepped out in faith and made a great sacrifice. We had, we had just bought a new home and I had money set up for landscaping and God said, in order to get out of this trouble with the church and the financial crisis, you need to make a sacrificial gift. And I remember I told my wife, we have to give the landscaping money. And she's like, what? We don't get any shrubs, no trees, no rocks, no, you know, nothing, no mulch around the house. Nothing. I said, we just have to step out in faith and trust God and do this. And when we went ahead and did this, it was a step of faith as Rob and Becca Ketterling. And when we did that, God honored that. Fast forward, maybe a month and a half, two months later, a guy is visiting our church and he said, hey, I was gonna write out a, a check to your church and the Lord told me to go ahead and uh, do your landscaping. Does that mean anything to you? I'm like, are you kidding me? I went and grabbed my wife. I said, just, just say to her what you just said to me. He said, well, I was gonna write out a check out to the church I'm visiting and the Lord said for me to do your landscaping. Do you, do you need landscaping? She starts to cry because I'll put this in context, we only had about $3,500 for landscaping. And we told them the story, we said, we gave it to the crisis, we emptied the account. No trees, no shrubs, no nothing. And he says, all right, I got this. He goes and gets a French designer to design the whole thing. He does all the plants, all the mulch, all plants, nine trees. He does like $30,000, 30 some thousand dollars worth of landscaping and, and we gave like 3,000 some. It was almost like a tenfold return on this and, and I just felt like God says, keep stepping on faith. If you're gonna do it, you have to be that type of follower. You don't need to be a professional and you're only trusting with the church stuff out here. Trust me with your stuff. And as you live this out, uh, it, it, it helps you to be a leader that is truly just a follower of Jesus first. Um, I want to I continue on with um, some stuff that I've got from another leader. I've modified a teaching that I heard before. And I, I want you to keep growing and maturing as a leader. Um, and, and just keep saying, God, I, I want to keep growing as a follower, and as you mature as a follower, one of the things you're gonna start to do is you're gonna understand the complex. By being a follower of Jesus Christ, you will understand the complex things and you'll, you'll get a greater understanding. Um, you're, you're, the Bible says this in 1 Corinthians 14, 20. It says, dear brothers and sisters, don't be childish in your understanding of these things. Be innocent as babies when it comes to evil, but be mature in understanding matters of this kind. He's like, be innocent of these things, but be mature of this. Be able to understand the complex things. Grow as a leader and become uh, mature. And as you, as you understand the complex things that, that are there in ministry, um, you'll get a greater return for your life. I just wanna say this, sometimes you don't know um, the things that other people do know, and, and, and as you grow, you start to realize, aha, now I know why they did that. Now I know why they did that. I remember uh, we went to visit Bill Hybels, uh, well, we went to visit Willow Creek years ago when Bill Hybels was the pastor there, years ago. And I remember I met with a staff member and he's like, Bill doesn't talk to these guys and he's so busy in this. And I, I was ripping them. I didn't understand the complex things of running something so large. And I remember I ripped on him. I didn't understand him. I, I didn't have that mature understanding. And I know as a follower of Jesus Christ, as I mature, I start, I start to understand deeper things. And I'm asking you to understand deeper, more complex things. And I realize, okay, he speaks to leaders who speak to leaders who speak to leaders. It's kind of the way it is. And I'm, I, I'm saying, learn to grow in these areas. Um, Really, when, when it comes down to this, um, mature leaders, the Bible says in Hebrews 5, 14, but solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Be the type of leader that says, I don't need an incentive to perform. I'm gonna be the type of leader that you can follow because I've trained myself to distinguish good from evil. Why? Because the keywords, train yourself. 
trained yourself and you're a self-starter, you're going to do this and you've trained yourself. Um, value the things that are important. Value the things that are important. At the end of the day, um, we say the things that matter are a good name, the word of God, wisdom. Uh, value the things that are important and be able to uh, be a leader that is worth uh, following. Um, I'll close with this thought, um, trying to stay on your time frame here. Um, one of the things is I count as the greatest compliment that people say to me as a leader, they're, they're like, Pastor Rob, you're the same guy on the stage as you are in the green room, as you are in the restaurant, as you are on the golf course, I might be a little more frustrated there, um, as you are in your home. There's a consistency. And when you see your walk with Christ as being a follower of Jesus first, and then the pastor, then the teacher, the leader, whatever he's called, when you, there's a, a consistency that's there that says, this is who I am, this is what I do, and who I am doesn't change, doesn't change. I will live consistently as a leader. That's, that's what it takes. And so I'm praying that that same thing could be said about you. Consistent leader that is worth following because you're a follower of Jesus Christ. And, and when they look at you, they say, same, 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 same. So I'd love to pray for you and uh, pray over you right now that this would be a moment that you say, I, I just wanna, I wanna be a, a follower of Jesus Christ that loves him first. And I, I, I never wanna lose love. All right, I, I said I was gonna close and how many know that's like preacher speak for not really, but I'll never forget, I was talking to a guy in San Francisco, he had an inner city ministry and he said, wow, he goes, you haven't lost the joy of like loving Jesus. I said, well, should I? He goes, sometimes pastors lose the joy. He goes, they become cynical. They become critical. They just lose the joy. I said, I never want to lose the joy. I never want to lose the joy. I want to keep the joy and the wonder of serving Jesus. And it stays by keeping it personal, personal devotion, personal uh, worship, personal growth, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Never forget, he's your savior. He's your savior. It's a personal relationship. So Lord, I just pray right now that you'd help us all. We're in this calling. I don't even wanna call it a profession. It's really, it's a calling. We're in this calling. And in this calling, I am asking that you would help us to remember before you called us, you loved us. Before you called us, you loved us. And so God, help us to live in that love, that love for you. It was a personal relationship that started this all. And so God, I pray that we'd keep it personal and we continue to be the type of, of leaders that are staying in love with you and moving forward in a personal relationship. Bless those right now. If they're, if they're drifting and there's conviction here, God, I pray that they'd get back to their first love. If there was just an affirming thing where people said, that's me, that's me, praise God. Same everywhere, same, same, same. Help them to live that way. And we thank you, God. When we do it this way, it's, it, there's an ease to it. It's not a burden, there's an ease. So help us, God, to live in that way, followers of Jesus Christ first, personal relationship first. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen.